Bible said. He said that, uh, and that by His power, by His power, He may fulfill every good purpose of yours. By His power. You pray for power, He said. Pray for power. And the resource for His desire for His church. Pray for power. In verse 12, In order that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in Him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose isn't for you. The purpose is for God. In order that, or for the purpose isn't for you, the purpose is for the Lord. Okay? This is the highest motive. So, we, when we pray, we have to pray for power. The power to fulfill, the power to, uh, uh, to live a life of faith. Let me just share to you something about <coughs> power, pray for power, uh, pray for power in our Christian life. A Christian life is a life that uh, uh, it, it is a, a life of faith, a faith to do something, a, a life that uh, you have to have the strength of God to do. You you need to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you have really to have you you need to have God's power to live, and uh, just like. Uh, the book of James. James tells us that uh, work, uh, faith without work is dead. So that means we Christians, we have the faith. When we work out the faith, so it is not dead. Right? Our life is faith working. Our life is uh, our life is Everything is talking about faith. If you do not have faith, you are not able to live a life as a, as a good Christian. But you have faith is not enough. You need to have work. In order to work, you need to have power. God's power will come to you. So that's why Apostle Paul said that time. you need to pray for power. If you work without God's power, you are working according to your own strength. That's why you have to work by God's power. You need God's power so that you can work your faith. Right? It's so important that uh, for Christians, we learn so many methods, we learn so many, uh, we, we have a lot of wisdoms. Uh, we, we read so many, many books and we know that uh, in order to do something, uh, that is the IU for you. Do it yourself, you learn and you also get wisdom from others, you read books. So you learn by that way and you work by that way. But knowing that uh, as a Christian, we, we do not depend on our own works. We need to depend on God's word, God's power. That God's power will come upon you and you will be able to work your faith out. So it's so simple for all of us to live a life easy. It's so simple. We think that uh, 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 sometimes it is our aim, our goal to live a life that is simple. Uh, 
simple in the sense that uh, you do not want to face difficulties. You want to live a life that is convenient for you. Whatever is convenient and you, you will let go of it. You don't want to go through so many hurdles in order to get something. Right? When you think in that way, the worry, the earthly wisdom is good enough, is enough for you to live a life like that. But if you want to live a spiritual life, earthly wisdom will not give you anything. Worry, uh, worry wisdom will not help you to be successful in spiritual things. That's why we need to have the power of God come upon us so that we are able to work out the faith. Huh? Man, there are so many spiritual things that we need to work out. How many Christian characteristics that you have in your life? Do you have a uh, Christian virtue? Sometimes we, we, think, we, we think that uh, let's teach somebody to have some Christian virtue. Our Christian virtues can be taught. Uh, I want to ask you this question. Is Christian virtue can be taught? Is Christian character can be taught? According to my experience, Christian virtues or Christian characters need to live out. Once we live it out, and you will reach, uh, you will reach, and you will uh, successful in reaching the aim that you have. The Christian life is so simple in a sense that uh, you. You are already put in a position that all resources are around you. Okay? So last year we have been touching on our resources in Christ. So we are put into a place that all the resources that you want are around you. The only thing that we want to do is we want to lift out. We want to work out. Work out the resources that God has given us. How are we going to work out? It is not by our own strength. So, Apostle Paul said that you need to pray. You need to pray for power. Only God's power can help you to live out the life that God desires. Right? It is something, it is not easy to understand but believe believe this point when you live out the life that wants uh, God wants you to live God's power will come upon you God's power will be backing you and you will continue to pray more pray more that you will have more power so that is faith, faith in prayer. When you have faith in prayer, you will work out your faith. Something philosophical. But you need power to work out your faith so that your work can be meaningful. So this is the way the Apostle Paul tells the people in Thessalonians. There are three things that you have to pray for your life. One thing is pray for worthiness. That you are worthy. You are continue to be worthy. Continue to increase in worthiness. Continue to have great characters, Christian characters in your life. Continue to live a life that uh, they will be, uh, they will be uh, acceptable. By God. So this is the way, this is the worthiness that you need to pray for. And the other thing is you have to pray for goodness. You have to pray for fulfillment of goodness in your life. 
Yeah. Fulfillment of goodness. What are the goodness? Only God is good. Whatever that delighting God is good. So you live a life that delight God. You live a life that uh, uh, the goodness of God manifested from your life. And through your life, the goodness of God share out. The, the goodness of God, just like the light, shine out in darkness. In this dark world, we need to have the goodness of God. So we, you, you need to pray that. Apostle Paul said that. You need to pray that, that there will be great fulfillment in your life with God's goodness. That's why we live a life that is according to God's purpose. And we live a life according to this. God will delight in your life and He will bless you with all blessings. Of goodness, the fulfillment of goodness. What are the goodness that we, we are lack of? Well, I'm a goodness. The Holy Spirit will give you goodness. Well, uh, one, one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is goodness. Right? So, goodness says that, uh, means that whatever that you do, it will be a blessing to others. Whatever that you do, it is according not only to God's will, but also it will bring goodness to others. It will share. Huh? The goodness will come out from your life and the goodness will benefit people around you. So, you do something that is according to God's will. Goodness. The thing, also Paul said that uh, you need power. You need power to work it out. You need power to work, to live a life that is worthy. You need power to live a life that is full of goodness. So these are the three things that Apostle Paul tells us. So bear in mind that whenever we pray, uh, think about these three things. Let us uh, advance from there. Let us uh, improve in our prayer life. We know there are so many things that we can pray. Now, these are the three things. Let us remind ourselves constantly that we need to pray for worthiness. We need to pray for fulfillment of goodness. And we also to pray for God's power to live out a life of faith, right? So this is the report the Apostle Paul uh, wrote to the Christian in Thessalonians. He said, I constantly pray for you, and these are the things that I pray for you. Uh, you, you, you. You need to tell people that these are the things that I pray for you. Uh, most of the time we, 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 we say that, uh, Alan, I pray for you, uh, pray for me, what? Uh, so you tell them, I, I will pray for you. I pray for you that uh, you will count, you will become worthy, increase worthiness in uh, in Christ. You will, uh, your worthiness will uh, will multiply. Uh, so that means that uh, your life is uh, getting more mature. You are maturing. But I pray for you, for your worthiness so that your life will be more mature <clears throat> and you will know God's and you will know the heart of God well and you will know everything about God and you will know what is your responsibility and you will know that you pray, I pray for your worthiness because <coughs> God counts you worthy. You have to live a life that is worthy and also you have to 
Uh, at once in worldliness. Wow, there's so many things. Uh. Then I also pray for the fulfillment of goodness. Uh, God will delight you. More delighting will come from you. I pray this fulfillment of this goodness unto your life. So you will be glad, isn't it? Wow, wow this friend pray for me so that I will be full of God's goodness. But there is a point that you need to delight in the things of God, so that the so that the fulfillment of goodness will multiply in your life. Then we pray for power. I pray for power. I pray for you. I pray for you for power for God's power. Because without God's power, you can't do anything. Because power, you only can do it on this shallow way, on this earthly way. But when God's power comes into your life, you will do it in a supernatural way. So this is God's heart. Apostle Paul knows God's heart. And he, won, he, he wrote this report to us. Uh, I count it. Apostle Paul wrote this report to us. And he wrote to the Christian in this world. These are the things that he prayed for. And constantly uh, remind ourselves that uh, whenever we pray for somebody, whenever we pray for anything, let these three things come into your mind. Worthiness, goodness, and also power. Let's pray. Father, we know that so many times we want to pray according to your way. Now we know the report from Apostle Paul tells us that these are the things that we need to pray for. Father, help us so that we can become worthy. Help us we can fulfill the goodness in you and also pray that, O oh Lord, that you give us power to live a life that is uh, manifesting the goodness and the worthiness of you, Father. Father, I pray that uh, all of us may know how to pray according to your way, according to your purpose. Because when we come upon you and bring upon you our purpose, and you will fulfill it, and you will make things happen. Lord, we trust in you because you are the source of all things, Father. Father, help us so that we will have a mind to think, we will have a, a clear mental capacity. So whatever that we do, whatever that we think, it will be according to your way. Father, we know that uh, in these few weeks, we are learning something that is uh, not common in our Christian thought. But we want to come to you and we ask the Holy Spirit to open our mind so that we will have the power to understand. We will have the means to work out <coughs> our Christian faith. Father, help us, O oh God, as we come to you. May your purpose be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And may your purpose also be done in our lives so that we will not lack the blessing of God and we will not 